Dear students, in this module, we are going to evaluate the structural properties of amino acids. As you know already, that each amino acid has a set of its own chemical properties, physical properties, hydrophobic or hydrophilic properties, and so on and so forth. It is important to note that each amino acid itself is a 3D structure and therefore will have some structural properties associated with it. So let's see how these stru structural properties they come into play. Each of these amino acids has a different shape and size. There are 20 amino acids and no two amino acids are exactly the same. So if they are different, if they vary in their size and their structure, then what is the effect of these sizes and structures? Moreover, what are the properties of these structures? How can these properties be translated into the overall property of a folded protein? So these are very important aspects to look at and these will really help us in structuring the overall protein form. Let's take an example. Here we have the amino acid glycine and as you can see besides the amine and the carboxyl group the R group is just a hydrogen or the R group can be called as absent in the case of glycine. Glycine is the smallest of all amino acids but because it is small it is flexible. Its agility helps in the polymer chain to be flexible. So if you have a lot of glycines in the polymer chain, then the protein will be flexible. So this is a very important property because all protein, they are folded, they have to be therefore flexible and glycine helps you achieve that. Let's take a look at another amino acid, proline. So proline has these aromatic rings, which you can see here. And these rings, obviously not as flexible as was the case with glycine. Note that these residues, these big aromatic rings, they help bring strength into the overall structure. Because glycine is weak and flexible, so we also need some strength for the overall structure and this is imparted by these rings. Please note that there is cis and trans form of these proline rings. So it is very important that each of these rings in its cis and trans form can be evaluated for a proper understanding of the protein structure. Just the effect of this cis and trans can lead to a rate limiting in the protein folding process. So they act like breaks on the protein folding if the protein folding needs to be stopped. Third is the cysteine. Cysteine is an amino acid with sulfur in its side chain. These sulfurs can come together as shown here and make bonds. So these disulfide bonds that are formed, they act like glue and they bring the cysteines together, they glue them and hold them in peace. So simply put, cysteine cements together the various amino acid side chains by making disulfide bonds and this is extremely useful in making 3D protein structures. Moreover, interesting information would be that in eukaryotes, the disulfide bonds, they can be frequently found in the extracellular domains that are there in the membranes. So to conclude, the amino acids just don't have physical and chemical properties, but that they also have a structural conformation and that this conformation is extremely important and determines the overall protein structure later on. And moreover, these structural properties, they give rise 
to properties that are unique to the structure of each amino acid as well.